I give to you. You know, that's the wonderful starting point for a relationship with God, the wonderful moment of surrender and the embracing of the gift of love. So this month, I don't know if you've noticed because we're not very far into January, but I've lo- I'm, I'm trying to start each message with a psalm, a psalm of praise and a psalm of hope. Because when you read the psalms, or most importantly, when you pray the psalms, they, they help you focus in on that relationship with Christ. And the psalm this morning is Psalm 36, and we're going to use verses 5 through 10. Your unfailing love, O Lord, is, a, is as vast as the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches beyond the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your justice like the ocean's depth. You care for your people and animals alike. Oh, Lord, how precious is your unfailing love. Oh, God, all humanity finds shelter in the shadow of your wings. For you feed them from the abundance of your own house, letting them drink from your rivers of delight. For you are the fountain of life, the light by which we see. Pour out your unfailing love on those who love you, and give justice to those with honest hearts. Amen. What a God we serve, amen? What a God who who loves us to the extreme measures. And, And I believe in worshiping him, we need to start that by centering ourselves around his glory and his majesty. Center our hearts and our minds. Trust in him with all of us, heart, soul, mind, and strength. And receive the finest God has to give you. A wise man came to me. Would you click to the next slide? This week or last week, I don't remember what it was. And he said, I was reading this and it just clicked in my mind. Grace is when God gives us good things that we don't deserve. Mercy is when he spares us from the bad things we do deserve. Blessings are when he is generous with both. Truly, we can never run out of the reasons to thank God. Amen. Amen. Think of that. Grace is when he gives us what we don't deserve. Mercy is when he spares us what we do. And blessings are his abundant gift of life. For each of us. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. I want to focus this morning on a, a piece of scripture that I found in the book of John chapter 2. It was about Jesus and the wedding of Cana. And it was very early in Jesus' life and he was still traveling with his mother. And um, he was attending a wedding. So we're in John 2. We're going to begin with verse 1. The next day, there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. The wine supply ran out during the festivities, so Jesus' mother told him, they have no more wine, which back then was um, a failure on the part of the host. Dear woman, he said, That's not our problem. And Jesus replied, For my time has not yet come. But his mother told the servants, Do whatever he tells you to do. Words of wisdom. Standing nearby were six stone water jars used for the Jewish ceremonial washing. Each could hold 20 to 30 gallons, and Jesus told the servants, Fill these jars with water. When the jars had been filled, now dip some of it out and take it to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. When the master of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, though of course the servants knew, he called the bridegroom over. And he said, a host always serves the best wine first. Then when everyone has had a lot to drink, he brings out the less expensive wine. But you have kept the best until now. This miraculous sign at Cana in Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed his glories. 
and all the disciples believed in him. Now, when I think of that, I kind of look at this story as a parable, as a hidden lesson in the words of God. You see, the rules changed here again. The rules changed here. Jesus is revealing himself through the miracles of changing water into wine. And it's an in-person, inhuman miracle that are blessings from God. It, it hadn't been seen in that capacity before. And if you think about, of, you know, usually the host serves the best wine first and keeps the cheap stuff for when everybody schnookered, God did just the opposite, amen? He served the best in his son, Jesus Christ. He held nothing back for God so loved the world. And he spared nothing by giving his one and only son. The finest has been offered for our salvation and our world. So the challenge then becomes believing in him in his entirety. Whomever believes in him is forgiven and granted access then to eternal life. Believing and, and allowing the change that we, we watched last week to happen. Not just a bumper sticker or a cross around my neck or a fish in my back window, but a changed and transformed Man, woman, and child for Christ. Amen? Now, equipped and empowered then is the understanding of what God is doing for us so that we can carry out um, the, the second Timothy response about telling others about Christ. We're going to go to the book of 1 Corinthians now in chapter 12. Now, brothers and sisters, regardless your question about the special abilities that the Holy Spirit gives us, I don't want you to misunderstand this. You know that when you were still pagans, you were led astray and swept along and worshiping speechless idols. So I want you to know that no one is speaking by the Spirit of God. No one that is speaking by the Spirit of God will curse Jesus. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the presence of the Spirit within them. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who works, who does the work in all of us. A spiritual, is given, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help one another. Hear that again. We are given spiritual gifts to help one another, not for our own benefit. To the person, to one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. Go back to that other slide. Wise advice. Amen? Okay, you can go back. To one person, the same Spirit might give us the message of special knowledge. That's what pastors are supposed to have. To, that same, to the same Spirit, it may give faith deeper than valleys to other people and the gift of healing yet to others. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and the ability to, and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. And still another person is given the, the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another might be given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is this one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. And he alone decides which gift each person shall have. Now, in those 11 verses, there is a ton of controversy, especially speaking in tongues. We have distorted that to be, <laughs> in so many fashions that we think it is a requirement that all must have sometimes to be infiltrated with the Spirit. 
It's, it, it doesn't say that. To one person, they may be given that gift. To one person. Not an entire audience. So don't sweat the little things, but em- embrace the big things because all these gifts are given to each of us so that we can help each other. Amen? Yeah. Not for being able to speak in tongues. This, <laughs> and the other one is, how do I know when the Holy Spirit comes upon me? Oh, man. I mean, I've traveled a lot uh, in ministry and gone to a lot of churches and man is that one misinterpreted also but i think john wesley said it the best it was a quiet warming of my heart now you know some people think it's got to be the bam and flop on the floor and quiver uncontrollably and some people looked for this gift to be manifested in a way that that um stands out but i believe the spirit of god when it indwells and indwells in us releases compassion releases care concern the ability to pray for one another earnestly the the ability to weep for one another in moments of loss and in pain and in anguish the ability to simply love. We all don't need another picture of us taken for Valentine's Day, but someone's going to get that little flyer with all of our smiling faces, wishing them remembrance and happy Valentine's Day, and their heart will be gently warmed. They will know that they are not forgotten, that COVID hasn't isolated them in, in wherever they're at. And they're cared for. Um, I haven't seen my twins in three weeks. And COVID hasn't worked through them yet, so it could be another couple. I miss my kidders. Now, I can talk to them now. They, what do they do? They uh, Snapchat. Anybody Snapchatting? You are amazing, girl. I, I like to do the picture one, you know, where you put the thing over you, and you look funny. Have you on Snapchat yet? Maya is the king of face Snapchats. I haven't looked at that out yet. But see, just because I'm isolated from them doesn't mean I can't find ways to love them, to... to Send them a goofy picture to call them. They got cell phones for Christmas, the 12 year olds did. Yeah, yeah. I was 28 when I got my first cell phone. <laughs> and I got in big trouble for getting that from that woman over there. <laughs> but now it's the world has changed. But these, these gifts are given so that we can evolve and we can grow and can be huh, light and truth into a dark world. These gifts are for the glory of God and nothing else. Love one another in the same way I have loved you, said Christ. All for the honor and glory of his kingdom. In Leviticus 19, do not seek revenge or bear grudge against a fellow Israelite, but love your neighbor as yourself, for I am the Lord, God said. That's what it takes to change the world that we live in. In Romans 13, 8, Owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. Luke 17, So watch yourselves, for if another believer sins, rebuke that person. Then if there is repentance, forgive them and love them. Even if that person wrongs you seven times a day and each time turns again and asks for forgiveness, you must forgive because we're different. That's hard to do. Amen? There's a couple folks out there that have wronged us in life. There's a couple more standing in line to wrong us again. But we can't be like the world. 
We have to be of God's world and forgive them, pray for them, heap coals of happiness upon their head. Jesus sat down in Mark 9, called the 12 disciples over to him and said, Whoever wants to be first must take last place and be the servant of everyone else. None of this happens without that change in our heart. Lord, I give you myself, as the song said. As our opening song says, God will take care of you. Just give ourselves unto him, amen? Surrender ourselves to be instruments of his glory. The change, that's, that's my word of the year. This year is the word of change. We were talking in board meeting, um, what was it, Monday night, what? And we haven't had the Shrove Tuesday pancake dinner in two years because of the COVID blessings. Well, we're going to have a coat. We're going to have a Shrove Tuesday pan di- pancake dinner one way or another. If COVID goes, the numbers go down, we'll have it in here. If the numbers stay out of control and crazy, I know a guy who's committed his food truck to sit out there and have drive through pancake dinners. Either way, we're going to praise the Lord for the season of Lent by filling ourselves with pancakes, syrup, applesauce, and, and all the good things in life. Amen? So, we have no excuse. Now, I don't know if we're going to be able to do it Dave Slater style. You know, and have as many of the <laughs> extras if we go drive through chocolate chips, blueberries, pecans, M&Ms. What else did we have? An unending um, bonanza of toppings. But we'll gather together as God's people. Have a little pancakes. Fat Tuesday, as it's called down the south. And rejoice that the season of Lent is upon us. And our salvation is near. Because God loves us. Our love this week has to be centered on those less fortunate. Those who are facing the unknowns. And I encourage you all to find a card. Pick up the phone and call. And shower the Herberts with all the love we can this week. Difficult decisions are before them. And we... I'm not ready for that. Aaron and I were doing the year-end reports Friday. We have said goodbye to eight members of this church this last year. And the numbers are continuing. That pains me. I still have Dave's shoes on my shelf. And as long as I'm here, I'm going to walk by on Sunday morning and touch those black and white shoes <laughs> and say, I love you, buddy. Because he's up there praying for us. He's praying for us to rise to the occasion and to do whatever it takes so the word and love of Jesus Christ flows from this building like all the history of before. Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news that Jesus Christ our Savior and His wonderful Spirit is alive and well and with us. We are equipped. We are empowered to do the will of God for the transformation of the world. We are God's children. It's our time, church. Our time. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's close our worship this morning uh, with the closing hymn, How Great Thou Art.
Now that is a song for the ages. That shall never go out of style and shall never not be sung by the, by the lips of God's people. My final thoughts this, this morning are from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. But you shall receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. For you are my children. Look what we have been given. Grace and love and Jesus, wisdom and knowledge and his word, faith and strength in his spirit. Our God is good and is always with us. Amen.